Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery coming from the center of our own galaxy, right where the black hole is. A new star that's a new record holder. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right here is a simulation of the previous record holder, the so-called fastest star in the galaxy. This is the star known as S2, and right around here at the closest approach of its orbit, it's able to reach the velocity of about 2.5% of the speed of light, or around 7,500 kilometers per second. And the scientists have quite extensively studied these so-called S objects, which are essentially stars, very compact stars, really, really close to the center of the galaxy. But very recently, the German scientist, whose paper you can find right here, and also in the description below, discovered another star, another record holder for the fastest star in the galaxy, even faster than S2. The star, now known as S62, seems to have a very unusual orbit, very eccentric orbit, as we usually say, which, as you can see right here, seems to be very different from any other object in this region. S62 takes approximately 9.9 .9 years to go around Sagittarius A star, the central black hole, once, and as of today, this is one of the more unusual stars we've discovered so far. Although this does not include the so-called G objects, about which I've talked in the previous video from a few months ago. G objects are still the weirdest objects in this region. And you can learn more about these objects in one of the videos that's going to be popping up around the end of the video. But why is this called the fastest star? Well, it's because, once again, at the closest approach to the black hole, which is what we refer to as periapsis usually, the star itself moves at around 10% of the speed of light. That's about 30,000 kilometers per second. Just to give you a perspective here, the fastest man-made object, which is of course the Parker Solar Probe, is going to reach its highest velocity in 2024 when it's at the closest to the Sun. And so right here at the periapsis of its orbit, at the closest approach to the Sun, the maximum reached velocity is going to be, let's see in a few seconds here, so it says here approximately 190 kilometers per second. That's dramatically lower than the 30,000 kilometers per second that S62 has when it approaches Sagittarius A star, which is also about four times higher than the previous record holder S2. Now, why does it have such a high velocity? Well, it's of course because of the unusual elliptical orbit. When it comes to orbits, if I were to give a Parker Solar Probe a more circular orbit, in other words, if I were to decrease its eccentricity from about 88% to, let's just say, zero, the velocity would now drop to about 139 kilometers per second. And so essentially, the orbital parameters always depend on the shape and the proximity to the object that is being orbited. So in this case, the eccentricity of the orbit of S62 is responsible for giving it such a tremendously high velocity. And I tried to kind of recreate this in Universe Sandbox by using a model of Sagittarius A star and just a star similar to our sun right here. And you'll notice that right around this area, the velocity is actually close to about 30,000 kilometers per second as well. And the closest approach here is equivalent to the distance of the sun to, um, I guess, a little bit closer than Uranus. So in other words, maybe about 15 astronomical units or so. And this kind of a behavior and this kind of an orbit is very, very difficult to explain. So somehow this unusual star that's about 2.2 masses of the sun was able to survive for a relatively long time in this region, and it doesn't seem to have any signs of being disrupted or being stretched or anything. It approaches the black hole really closely and then leaves really, really far for the next nine years. The farthest distance here is probably around a thousand astronomical units or so. And so most of the time the star spans away from the black hole and then for probably only a few months or even just a few weeks approaches this region right here and ends up moving really, really fast in this region. But we really can't explain how the star got this orbit. One of the main explanations right now is that it possibly had a partner basically another star in orbit, and this partner somehow got kicked out of the system, or possibly even swallowed by the black hole, and this of course left the main star with a very peculiar orbit. And because these two stars act on each other as they orbit around one another, if you were to remove one of the stars, the orbit of the other would change as well. And this is how we think maybe it acquired this unusual eccentric orbit. But to have 
this really extreme orbit, a lot of things need to happen, and the fact that this star did not fall into the black hole is a mystery. At the same time, in one of the previous videos, we've talked about how some stars can naturally form around black holes. It's quite possible that this is one of those stars that was formed in this orbit from all sorts of material that was left around the black hole in its accretion disk and also in its neighborhood. And this, of course, could have resulted in the production of several of these S objects. We currently refer to this region as the so-called S cluster, and for the most part, we don't really know how these stars were created. The most prominent theory is that they were captured from other regions, but we don't really know, and they could have been just naturally created around the black hole. But hopefully, by studying S62 in a little bit more detail, and by identifying specific features of this star that other stars might not have, we'll be able to answer the question of its origin. Now, right now, we don't actually even know what's going to happen to the star, but the chances for it to collide with something and probably even fall into the black hole are pretty high. What is, however, pretty interesting about S62 is that it appears to be very similar to other stars in this region. In other words, if we were to look at all of these S objects orbiting around the black hole, they all seem to possess very similar features. They do seem to be compact, they seem to have relatively similar brightness, and they do appear to be star-like, not like the G objects I've discussed previously. And so in some sense, they probably do have similar origin, and discovering this will probably be quite a mystery to resolve. Now, one thing we need to understand is that, even though the simulation makes this appear as regular space, nothing here in this region is regular. This is an extremely dense region, here there's a lot of material, a lot of different energy, and the black hole itself creates very inhospitable conditions. Here, the density is much higher, like thousands of times higher than the density of space where we are, and there's millions and millions times more energy and more very energetic events happening here on a regular basis. So it will be very difficult to imagine what's really going on here, unless we do more thorough observations and try to simulate them here using supercomputers. But one thing we need to remember is that this region is extremely different from the space where we are. The actual density here is much higher, so there's like thousands if not millions of more particles in the actual space, and at some point some scientists even suggested that the region around the black hole is almost like some kind of an atmosphere, there's a lot of particles here that do interact. While well, at the same time, this is also an extremely active and extremely energetic region. There's like millions and millions times more energy here. There's a lot of radiation, a lot of various stuff going on. And this is an extremely active environment. So in some sense, trying to imagine this from our perspective here, where the solar system is, is going to be really challenging. The only way we can probably imagine what's happening here is by simulating it using supercomputers, because it's very difficult to see that far. Now, one day we might be able to answer the question to all of the mysteries around the supermassive black hole, and one day we might be able to understand what's happening here. But discovering stars like S62 is a very important process of us getting to these answers. Now, why do we want to know these answers, though? Well, one of the reasons is because, as I discussed in previous videos, we know that our black hole did erupt a few times, and some of these eruptions were really, really powerful. So, if one day S62 decides to collide with our black hole, a huge amount of radiation is going to be released. And we need to understand if this is something we need to be worried about. If the so-called Fermi bubbles that we discovered a few years ago were actually formed by a star collision with a black hole, we kind of need to understand if this can happen again and if this is something humans might potentially not survive. So these studies are pretty important and understanding what happens in space and how it affects us is also extremely, extremely important as well. But anyway, on that note, once we learn more about the star S62 or about other stars in this region, and also explain some of the other mysteries of the central galaxy, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, that's really it. Check out the paper in the description below, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences. And maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.
its orbit only takes about 